that means, Tim, it's another Wednesday, and it's time for Snipes and Stripes from NoFilter.net. I am Jeremy Roenick, joined by my very, very good-looking partner, Tim Peel. Tim, you're looking great. Hey, listen, you don't have the Snipes and Stripes shirt on. You're actually looking quite fashionable tonight. Thanks. What's up? I- Thanks. My family didn't recognize me when they didn't see me in a hoodie and sweatpants today. So. <laughs> well, I just came off the golf course, so I got my so got my hat with the ball marker on it, and I'm in Carmel, California, and I'm staying at this I'm staying at this um, this this kind of bed and breakfast, which you can see the absolutely magnificent wallpaper that's in this room that I'm at, but. Um, it's the eighteen. It's the AT and T Pebble Beach uh, Championship in the PGA, and it's right down the street here. And we're we're having a little sales event here, and it's um, it's terrible weather, bro. It is awful outside. But well, um, by the looks of that wallpaper in the background, I don't. I hope you don't open your door tonight. And you see Jack Nicholson at the end of the hall. No, dude, that was last night. So last <laughs> night I sit, last night I stayed at Cal Club. I stayed at Cal Club last night, and I swear to God, it's it was. It was one of the most eeriest feelings ever. It's one of the oldest golf courses in California. It was 1918. It was built in 1918. And I walked into the front door. So it's, it's this old kind of um, historic house. Oh, look at who's here. Look at who's here. <laughs> look who, like, right in the middle of what I'm saying, what I'm doing, we got one of my favorite people that just joined the show. Sorry. So, so, so. PLC, I'm gonna I'm gonna bypass my story about last night, and I'm gonna welcome on um, probably one of the one of the coolest and one of the most um, secondary co- most controversial people in the world besides me. <laughs> and and well, we, by, we, one, we hey, by the way, one, I'm of my, here one, very, one of my one of my very good friends and one of my favorite teammates of all time, Sean. Avery is joining us tonight on Snipes and Stripes. What's up, Aves? What's going on, man? Uh, wow, it feels very nice to be with both of you. I enjoy the uh, I enjoy the hustle. You guys are really grinding. Um, Peeler, where are you? St. Louis. St. <laughs> <Saint> Louis. <laughs> St. <laughs> Louis. I had the luxury. I had the luxury of, of going down memory lane in my head this morning. Do you remember that, that exhibition game in Vegas, JR? Of course I do. Of course. I take, I take heat from some of my old, my old GMs still today because of it. I remember standing. I think I was on the ice and leaning over the bench. And I can still remember one of those feelings <laughs> where you're I think I looked at Eric Belanger and said, is he dancing? <laughs> <laughs> It'll never happen again, Apes. It'll never happen again in the league, ever. It'll never no. happen. No. Man, um, you are loose. Loose as a goose, baby. <laughs> well, listen, I think that that's one of the reasons why you and I got along so well together is because we both had a passion and a love and a different kind of mentality for the way that we lived the game and the way we lived the life. And, um, and I, and I was so happy when PLZ said, Hey, let's get Abe's on. I said, absolutely. Because you, you've been able to really, um, kind of really take your life in a different direction. And, you know, obviously hockey has been awesome for you, but you've been able to like do so many different things, um, in your life. And I'm, I'm, I would love to hear like, how, how, how do you like where you are right now? Because I watch you every day, Aves, and you entertain me every single time that you come onto my phone and my computer. And I this is what I do every day. I A big smile comes on my face <laughs> and I chuckle and I laugh because I know, I know the person that's behind what you're saying. How, how are you these days and how do you feel about where you are right now? It's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, karma is an, an amazing thing because I guess I have like a golf prodigy on my hands. Yes, your uh, son. I was gonna, I was going to bring that up later in the show. Okay, I bring that up later in the show. I see all the videos with your son. The guy makes yeah. chips and putts from all over the place, and I don't know where he gets it from because it's not you. No, I know that's what's so <laughs> funny. So I I would I would say that like, oh uh, man, I wish I had had kids earlier. You know. 
from a from a thirty thousand feet life view standpoint. But no, I, I think you know I stopped playing. I guess you would say at an early age, right? And I and I think that I kind of I don't know what I thought that I was going to do. Uh, you know, the first year I spent, I wrote a book, and and really what happened was our mutual friend Pete Berg put me. Um, yeah. He was filming a movie, Patriots Day in Boston, and he said, come down, I'm going to put you in this movie. And uh, I'd never been on a movie set before. I'd never really seen anyone make a movie or, you know, even in high school, like we thought the theater guys were, were like weird, you know, a little bit. They sang and they danced and, mm -hmm. and Pete got me on set. And I was in a scene with Mark Wahlberg and, you know, there's 200 people around and they say action. And it's like, holy shit. Boom. <laughs> you know, you've been on a movie set, JR. You, yep. you know, yep. man, the stakes are high. Nothing had felt similar to, you know, playing at Madison Square Garden or scoring a goal in the NHL. So I basically went on a journey that I think everyone sort of thought was really crazy and kind of stupid. And I said, I, I, I'm going to be an actor, um, which then I had to go and learn how to act, which took like four years just to in, in acting classes and wherever I could sort of practice and figure it out and then start the process. And so where am I today? Today, I sit here and say, oh, man, I'm so fucking hungry. And this is just like the beginning of this whole thing. And, you know, I'm in a movie right now that arguably could win the most Academy Awards of all time. And no shit. Oppenheimer. Yeah. You played a hockey player, right, Ace? I played a hockey player. Uh, yeah, we did that uh, Maurice Rocket Richard movie a long time ago. But this is a, you know, I'll tell you the difference. Like in sports, no matter what, if you're a great player, they're going to find you eventually. Yeah. You're, you're going to get a shot eventually. In this business, patience is the most important thing. But also, like, I know that this is going to work out. Like, I know mm -hmm. that as long as this is taking, you know, six, seven, eight years, might end up being 10 years. And anytime you listen to anyone that it takes 10 years. Like yeah. that's how long it fucking takes. You know, you have to put the work in and you got to grind. And I feel great. Like I, I feel, I still feel like I'm doing the right thing when, you know, I still think people, some people think like, ah, can you really pull this off? Yeah, the naysayers. Really do it? Oh, the naysayers. Fuck that. Yeah. yeah. You know? And, and that's kind of, um, I don't think that fuels my fire, but I, I don't know. I guess we're, we're all of us, all three of us. I guess we don't really worry about the naysayers. No, How can you? no, no, you can't. And that's a, that's a good point. We've all been through our shit. Jared has been through his, you've been through yours. I've been through mine, but I got to, I laugh. I love your little, uh, two, three minute clips that you do on Instagram. <laughs> I saw one the other day about Cutter Goche. And I fucking laughed my head off. You called Philadelphia the zombie eclipse. You uh, shit on their cheesesteaks. You, you shit on John Fetterman, <laughs> and, which is easy to do, okay? And I don't know if you noticed, days, but his wife filed for divorce the other day. That's a shocker, right? Shocker. <laughs> He, he's becoming a Republican. Well, okay, maybe I will like him. <laughs> I don't know. He's doing this weird thing. I spoke too soon. But, but, but yeah, I, those. I was laughing. Where did you get that idea to do that? Just a two, three minute thing. So, um, the Nelk boys, who mm. are, um, mm. you know, these yep. Canadian yep. kids yep. that have been grinding, and, and, and Kyle, who's sort of leading the charge over there. Canadian kid, Mississauga. I think two years ago, he said to me, brought it up. Hey, we should try and figure out how to do something. And, you know, 
it just kind of took a minute and then we we they have happy dad which is their uh which is their seltzer that they're really right. sort of pushing yep. and they're smart they're trying to go out and get some talent they're signing a lot of ufc fighters anyways long story short we said how can we do this and i was like well i don't want guests because i don't want to have to try and hustle for guests and yeah that's a whole grind i'd like to just be able to turn the camera on and like sort of act like a crazy war vet and yeah. just yell things <laughs> <laughs> but also what do you mean just starting you've done that your whole life yeah. <laughs> so and and, and hey, we got to go back a little bit because um you kind of uh you you were you were misunderstood and i think underappreciated as a hockey player i played with you with the la kings uh back in in uh, 2005 2006 and what i didn't really understand leading up to playing with you is how good of a hockey player you are that you were you could skate you could shoot you can do so many things but so many people like they did with me only looked at the things that you said or the attitude um what what drove you back then what what made you play the way that you did act the way that you did your your mentality because you were a awesome hockey player like when well, i tell you you can skate you're one of the best one of the one of the best guys at doing a little bit of everything right but everybody remembers you for like me of your attitude your mouth the things that you said the things you did and didn't give you enough credit for the the, the great hockey player that you were do you see well, that kind of same way yeah, well, I mean, I appreciate that. I didn't score as many big goals as you, but but not even close. But I I will. But you say, could play, Aves, Aves. You could play the game well, I, really well. You know, when I think back and I look, I I wish, because like I was out of control too. You know what I mean? Like I was a fucking loose cannon. Why? Why? I I think I had a small man syndrome because I was always small and I always had a chip on my shoulder and. Like my superpower was my abil ability to anticipate and I guess tilt the ice, right? And yeah, in whatever wild way that sometimes I figured out how to do it, um, it was kind of a little bit of a throwback. But I also I leaned into I was just really nasty and sort of mean. Now, on the flip side of that. I think about it like, fuck, I wish I had a Mike Keenan, you know? I never had that coach that, and people talk about Tortorella, but Tortorella is different. Like Tortorella is not Mike Keenan, you know? Yeah, yeah. I am like, I, I man, I, I think now, and I got to play for Scotty for, for two seasons, actually one and then, and then Dave Lewis. That would have been amazing to be able to play for him longer but yeah. somebody that could have and i still remember stevie y telling me like i think he just got mad at me one day and told me to just like shut up and play <laughs> <laughs> well speaking about shutting up we were at madison jr we're at madison square garden one night and uh you know, I always think of Aves in a New York Ranger uniform. I think he was made to be in a New York Ranger uniform. The lifestyle in New York, just everything. He, the people in New York, those fans, buddy, they loved you there. They loved John Avery. And we're skating around. Pittsburgh's in town. Sid's in town. And we're skating around. The game's going on. And do you know what story I'm going to tell about? Okay. So there's a lot of chirps that I can't repeat on a show, but I can repeat this one. And and, and he's going around and he's calling Tyler Kennedy pig nose. Hey, pig nose. Hey, pig nose. Hey, pig nose. And I'm like, finally, I go to Aves. I go, why the fuck are you calling Tyler Kennedy pig nose? He goes, Peelzy, have you ever looked at his nose? And I skated over, you know, kind of. <laughs> And, I, and I'm like, geez, he does have a pig nose. 
Honest to God, I can remember that. I'm like, why are you calling this guy pig nose? I laughed and laughed. I could laugh about it. And by, and by the way, we're now buddies because we bonded over our kids. And he's like a great dad. And he's always yes, he great. is. Yes, he is. What a well, guy. What well, a guy. you know what? You, you talked about, and I'll, I'll just touch on this quick, but you talked about having kids earlier, buddy. I had Bronson up. 46, Briella 48, I would have been a shitty dad in my 30s. So everything happened for a reason. And I know yeah. how much you spend time with Nash and love him. And everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're right. But, but, uh, that's yeah. fine you, with him now. <laughs> you, you, you know, Tim Kennedy was very tough. People don't understand. I fought him, I think, a couple of times. He was one of those guys where, like, I was I was more nervous to fight him than I'd fight a bigger guy because that fucking Tim Kennedy, he threw, like, cannons, you know? Yeah, he was yeah. tough. He was tough. Hey, is it, tr- is it true when you retired, I heard a story that you went onto the New York, uh, onto the Brooklyn Bridge and dropped your skates into the, into the, into the river? Is that a true story? No, I think I just said that on. Uh, I was on Andy Cohen's show, dude. That would have been, be- been the best video of all time. I would. I would have loved that because I would have done the same thing. Because I hate skating. I hate skating. I don't like playing hockey anymore. And when I heard that, I'm like, this is why I love. This is why I love Sean Every because he's like, I'm done. I'm dropping my skates into the into the into the river, and I'm not going to skate ever again. I thought that was a great story, though. Well, I tr- I tried to. Uh recreationally like come back and play in the in the Brockheimer skate on Monday night and then I got into a little bit of trouble because some kid scored four goals and then he he waved at our bench during during the scrimmage <laughs> and Luke, I went up and I I fucking poked him in the back of the legs JR anyways his helmet came off it was the whole thing but Luke Robitaille banned me from like 52 arenas no way. <laughs> Our teammate. I played with him twice. Detroit yes. and LA. I know. Yeah. I've been I, friends with Luke for 20 years. He banned me from 52 arenas, health cells, every arena in California, I think. But then they own arenas in other places. Yeah. So I I said, fuck it. I, I went into a jiu-jitsu gym and, and just my skates are in the garage. But but yeah, I can't even play if I want to. I'd have to fly back <laughs> east. That's fantastic. Hey, listen, you, you touched on torts. I love torts. You asked Brandon Dubinsky. I, I, I sent out a tweet a year ago about, about torts, about how much I love him. Dubinsky messaged me. He goes, I, he goes, are you fucking serious? He goes, I, you don't know him, but I just know how he was to me. I, I talking to him off the ice. Did you like playing for him, Ace? So, Listen, I think that uh, he's very effective early on, right? Because he comes in and it's it's an energized environment. He makes you he makes you grind. Everybody's in great shape. Kind of like the military, like a general coming in, right? Like it, yeah. yeah. Except here's the problem. It's tough to respect a general that never went into the war. Good right? point. Yeah. And Torts, he just pushed it too far sometimes with guys. Like a Marion Gabrick, right? And what and Gabby, he burnt out in New York. He had some great years, but finally he was like, I can't fucking play for this guy anymore. You know what I mean? And it happened with a lot of guys. And I'll shoot it straight with you two. The moment that I made up my mind about Tortorella was when he didn't come to Bugard's funeral. Yeah, like, I, I seen you mention that a few times. That that really bothers you, eh? Yeah, because we were there and we saw what happened over. Uh-huh. Remember, like a, a ten month period. I mean, Boogie signed with us, and he was dead by May. And I saw how Torts managed boogie and i think that you know he talks about he talks about his players right he's a big players guy 
listen, I just, I saw what went down there and, and, uh, and then when it all went down and he did, and he didn't come to the funeral, I don't think it was just me yeah. that said, I mean, that was like, that was a fucking dark, dark moment. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Our, our head coach wasn't yeah. there. I remember, I remember reading a few stories years later about how Boogie was, uh, rehabbing an injury and he was told to come in way before the team. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. He, he, he made he didn't him, want him around. The, he didn't want him around the team. He didn't want him around the team and he wanted to make it as difficult as possible on him, which by the way, if a guy's a lazy ass and he's entitled and he's not working and a coach wants to do that, no problem. Sure. I got no, problem. but we knew what was going on with Boogie. Mm -hmm. We knew that he just didn't adjust well to New York city. He was a big giant man who had grown up out West and then he was in Minnesota. Like you knew right away. And also you knew that that was the moment the game had sort of passed. That was the, the, that was when the turning point started to happen where those guys became, I think a little bit less effective. Yeah. yeah. The obstruction, they, the rules, you know, the, the game started to speed up, but so, yeah, I mean, that's my honest opinion, right? I played for torts. Uh, he rode me hard, which was fine, but it was a lot of the, he also did something that I just realized I kind of forgot about it. I don't even know if I've told anyone this. Um, a friend of mine is a director, Bennett Miller, and uh, he directed Capote, but he also directed this movie called Moneyball. And I was, it was in the off season and I was in, L in LA and, and Bennett was going to put me, he's like, I'm going to put you in a scene, right? Sort of the same thing as Berg. And I get to LA and I'm going to be there for four days and I'm going to shoot for three. I don't know who, I don't know how they knew or who knew or whatever, but a few hours into the first day, I get a call from Torts. And he used to do this. He used to call guys in the summer and like sort of randomly ambush them in a weird way. Anyways, he called me. He said, I know where you are. I know you're out there. I know you're shooting a movie. You better have your ass back in New York like tomorrow. <laughs> and wow. You know, that was just one of those things where it was wow. like, um, he didn't want, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Right. Like it was the off season. My conditioning is never an issue. So why would you right. be worried about where I am? Yeah, no question. So, you know, I, a I, control freak, right? I think so, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I, I, it seems like his pattern is, is, you know, maybe, maybe this is the team that that'll bite into it, you know, and also people change by the way, I haven't spoken to the man in 10 years. I don't know how he coaches now. No, I, yeah, but you know, you know what I, you know what I see though, Abe. I said you're you're saying some critical things about him, but you're not saying bad things about him. You're saying things that are just honest and 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 they're, they're very logical and heartfelt things. I don't th I don't look at what you're saying and saying that you don't like John Tortorella. He's just a different bird. And I was yeah. the same with Ken Hitchcock. Ken Hitchcock was not my favorite coach in the world. I actually didn't get along with him at all, and a lot of times didn't like him. But I had respect for him, and I knew that he was one of the best coaches and one of the best hockey minds that I knew. We're not right. going to get along with people, but we understand. And when you said Keenan, that was my – he was my change. He's, he's the guy that made me the player that I was. Right. And and, and I really I really appreciate your, you know, your being straightforward and saying stuff like that because not many people will say that. So in, in moving forward, you're talking about the game – we played in one of the hardest times to play in the game in terms of yeah. physicality and players. You talk about Bugard and I was with Probert and so on and so forth. How do you see the game today? You have a lot of opinions and I love your opinions and they're always bang on with how I feel. So I laugh and I listen and I'm, I agree. Where do you see the game right now in terms of talent, um, guts, balls, mentality yeah i mean i would say so i've been a tampa bay lightning fan for probably the last four or five years um 
that's the type of team that I like to cheer for, a team that is well-balanced, that still sort of relies on their grind guys to chip in to win. Yeah, yeah. Um, plays hard, plays fast, will also win games when they're down and out, you know, have the bite to come back. I think that the game today, like I heard Steve Stayhouse's name the other day. I didn't even know he, he works for Edmonton now. Yeah, yeah. What a fucking, what a motherfucker to play against. No, Steve's the GM of uh, Ottawa now. Oh, really? Yeah, go? yeah, yeah. He, he just got appointed GM of the Ottawa Senator. Just newly. Okay, yeah. Newly. Congrats yeah. to him. Right? Right? Is he tough to play against? He I was. think so. Yeah. JR, yeah. no? Yeah, he, he, he did his job. He did his job well. But there was six of those guys, right? Like a Stefan Robidoff. Or I, I think that the game now lacks a lot of depth. Um, I think that what I'm confused by is these guys are like still sort of mean and rough. Like there's great parts of the game. I can talk about the Kachuk brothers I love, Reinhardt. I mean... But some of these hits, right? Yeah. Like the the fucking elbow that got five games. Gallagher. Gallagher. I mean, that should have been twenty games, right? What about the hit from behind? The hits from behind from from Nick Cousins, like it's the same thing. Yes. Yeah. So, I guess Cousins feels safe because there's not even really any sort of dangerous middleweights anymore, or those guys like even a guy yeah. like. You know, Jr. You're a fucking dangerous guy out there. Like, who knows if Jr. is going to elbow you, or you're going to get fucking two-handed. Yeah. Like, the game is different in the sense that these guys can kind of call their own shots and make their own moves. And the team that I think wants to be the biggest dogs and the biggest bullies and play the fastest are going to win. Um, I don't know why these guys turn their backs and guys hit each other now. Like, I don't fucking understand it. Yeah. I don't understand why guys turn their backs, one, right? Then I don't understand why, if a guy's got his back turned to you, just go for the puck. Yeah. Like, that's a perfect opportunity to now, you don't have to lay the body and, and you win a puck battle. But these guys are going in, they're labeling each other on the numbers. Is that a respect thing? You know, what's it like to play in the NHL now and be in those locker rooms with these kids? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't think I don't. I don't think you and I could do it. I don't think yeah. you and I could be in there. Yeah. I think you and I. I think you and I would be throwing throwing punches. We'd be yelling and screaming. We'd be pulling our hair out of our head. To tell you. Yeah. Too. I really I, do. I'll tell you. I was very excited when Lou pulled the trigger on Patrick Waugh because, like. Fuck, man. The more the more was, the more talk it, the more exactly. Uh, exactly. Right? Yeah. Hundred percent. Let's get those guys in there more. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree. Um one other funny story, JR, from Madison Square Garden. I loved I loved Sean and and I'm sure we got into a lot of FU contests. Yeah, but we were yeah, we were always cool. We're but, always uh, <laughs> but I come up one night. I come up. I go, Age, you're playing really well. Like you're playing really well tonight, and, and he was. He was playing well, and, and I like to have these guys on my side. The guys that were the the pests and the shit disturbers. You know, I wanted them on my side. And so a few minutes later, he comes up to me. He goes, Pilsy, what are you doing after the game? And I go, I go, I'll probably just going back to the hotel and having a beer. And and he goes, Hey, he goes, I'm hanging out with both of the Olsen twins. He goes, Why don't you come hang out with us tonight? And I thought about it after. I'm like, I'm like, I'm already, at, I'm always in in shit with the league. I go, I'm gonna go out in New York City with John Avery and the Olsen twins. I, Cindy Adams is gonna have a picture of us on page six in the New York Post. <laughs> I never have, I never had a player come up to me and say, "Come hang out with a celebrity after the game." You were dialed in there, though, buddy. You were dialed. Let's listen. Let's cut through all the bullshit. You were dialed in in New York. New York he was, down was in L.A. He was down in L.A. He had a publicist. He was ready to go. He was in in the mix. He was, you know, 
he, this I, is always his Sean had a had a way of always being with the right people with the top with the top people with the in people all the time all the time I um when I got to New York I told uh they asked me where do you want me where do you want to live and I had played in New York twice prior because remember like the lockout and the yeah. schedule was yeah. weird so I had never really been there and I said just put me in the middle of the city like, I don't even know if I knew it was an island at that point. I said, put me in the middle. <laughs> so when they first, when I first got there, I remember, and getting to New York was a whole thing. Like Brendan Shanahan and John Rosasco, who was uh, JR, JR works, JR works for Shanny in Toronto now. Those are the two guys that got that deal done. Um, but when I got there, they put me in Times Square. They put me on top of the oh. M&M building, which is like directly, you know, it's like if you don't have blinds, it's like a, yeah. you'll go crazy. Like the fucking lights. <laughs> it's like an ass. <laughs> but the moment I got there and I grew up watching movies and like the first time I heard two cab drivers motherfuck each other on the street and, and seeing like a, a fight over a parking spot, I was just, that was it. Uh, my juices were, were flowing so much. And I still remember the first time I ever went out in New York, there was a nightclub there called Bungalow 8, which was really yep. like, yeah, it was a legendary. Bungalow was, was legendary. Mm -hmm. And it was in the meet, it was in the club land, which is like sort of a zombie land of New York. And I went to the front door of Bungalow 8 after a game on Saturday night. And the the doorman there is a legendary guy, Disco. He's like a six foot eight, 400 pound, beautiful black man that just like will scare the death out of you, right? And I walked up to him and I said, I'd like to meet the owner of this place. And he was kind of looked at me and like, what the fuck is this guy doing, right? <laughs> and then I just said to him, this is my name. I just got traded here. I played for the Rangers. We finished the game. I heard this is the best place in New York. I'd like to meet the proprietor of this wonderful joint. So he goes inside and like four minutes later, he comes out with this, with this beautiful woman and her name was Amy Sacco. And Amy's one of those people, one of those legendary people that just, she is the gatekeeper, right? Yeah. Yeah. The point of the story is like, I was never afraid to explore. And I always wanted to be around like, who's these interesting people doing fucking awesome, fun, weird shit. And when it got to New York, it got weird because New York's not LA. It's like, you could go for days in New York. You could stay yeah. up. You could, you know, thank God I wasn't a card player, JR. Cause like all those late night games in new york i have them i i was in them i've been in a lot of underground underground yeah. poker games or everywhere i i was right. in them i've been in them but right. you rounders rounders i only know you uh, you know a little bit but i you weren't a big drinker or anything were you like no no like you would go out and get shit faced and you go out and have a few and feel good but you weren't like it wasn't like you were partying and out of control right i, I don't think anyone ever had to worry about whether i was going to be ready to go like no the right. next day that type of thing no, you know? right. um but but you know listen i was young and we ran hard like we we ran hard there it's what a fucking city to play in i mean nobody <laughs> understands hey hey Aves, did you ever feel that your 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 desire to be in that in that a crew in that a that in that scene took away from your game on the ice because I, I i at one point thought that maybe that what i was doing kind of i was so i was so into doing something over here and so like i don't want to say distracted but it kind of took me away from um the game a little bit in terms of pre preparing i don't think i didn't see that with you but did you feel like that that like, because you wanted to be part of like the A list scene, and you did yeah. a very good job of putting yourself in it. Did you think you separated the game with your social life? I I think that um, 
I think that certainly I could have done a better job, uh, you know, focusing on the game, analyzing the game more. But also the game at that point, it was a pretty straightforward game. Yeah, you know what it I mean? was. Yeah, it like, was. You played straight ahead. We didn't have all these, you know, the way they play now. And, and, and so I don't know, you know, like I'll come back to it. Maybe I, I, I didn't have the tools at that point. And like, I, again, I wish I had a, had a coach that was the right, was that guy. What that tools, just, what tools you're saying? Cause you had every, you had every talent tool that it took to play the game. Like I, I said to you in the beginning, you could play the game and skate and shoot and do everything as well as anybody on the ice. Anyone. I, I think that, um, I think that what it did do, it took away from me ever taking a leadership role and having to put more responsibility on myself as far as the relationships. I was always the black sheep. The guys were always like, that's Abe's. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. that's a Abe's is over there. Right. Like, where's Abe's? Uh, uh, he's over there. You know what I mean? Instead I know exactly of, what you mean, bro. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yes. That's what I regret because I think that that would have been a different element to my game and I would have been really good at it as I see today. Like I would have, I would have been a better teammate that made me a better player, but really like a more, more, more of a leader. And I never took that responsibility on, on myself. That's something that I regret, you know? Um, it's interesting. It's, but, it's but really it, interesting. And, and, you know, listen, because I know my best years were when Shani was in New York, because if there was ever anyone that sort of, I don't know, Shani. Corralled you? Yeah. Corralled you? Corralled yeah. you? Yeah. 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 Who, who, who are some of your favorite teammates? You played with a lot of great people, man. You oh. played with a lot of great people. I know you, I know you love Holly. Oh man, what a what a human! What a human! I was, By the way, Dave, I was just having a few drinks with me. He was in town uh, for the for the Blues Hall of Fame about a week ago, and I was at Chaser's got a new restaurant here, and I was having drinks him and I and Chaser, and just listened to Holly. He has not changed a bit from twenty years ago. He's the same guy. Laugh your ass off. Says it like it is. Just doesn't give a shit, right? I don't remember like a lot of the stories because there was just, it felt like there was so much, you know, they come back in flashbacks, but me getting Holly stoned on, on weed brownies. <laughs> <laughs> he hadn't, he hadn't smoked marijuana in like 17 years. That was his thing, right? Yeah. Hadn't done it since, since junior B. <laughs> Wherever the fuck he was, he played junior B somewhere, like in Canada, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the my buddies came down from Toronto, and I, I lived in Holly's Garage. And he had this wild house in uh, downtown Birmingham, which was 40 minutes from the rink in Detroit. We called it the jukebox. And the boys came in, and we went to the game we played the, the guys dropped their bags off they put some snacks in the fridge that they had brought from home uh you know like ontario guys like these guys are like baking their own marijuana oil and the whole thing at this point back then <laughs> so we go out after the game me and the guys my buddies go out after the game and uh we get home late and the house was big and you know, Holly, like, I, I could do, you know, it was fun, right? It was very fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, the only rule he had was he liked me to get the car, start the fucking car and put it in the driveway. And, you know, if you want to go and get my coffee, be, if you want to go and get my coffee, because this is 2002, guys, so there's no uber you can't order you got to go and physically order it so sometimes i would go i'd run starbucks so i'm in the car it's nice and warm he drove a t-bird in the winter which was like such a holly move remember those little t-birds yeah. i think he won it in an all-star game 
So I'm waiting in the car and Darcy comes out and she's like, you, I don't know if he can, I don't know what's going on, but he's been up all night. Or you got a game. We had a game. We had a we 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 either had a game or it was the practice or something. But but yeah, we had practice or a game. I go inside and he's sitting on the floor in in his walk-in closet, which was fucking huge. It was a huge walk-in closet, and he just kind of looks up to me, <laughs> and like it was one of the only vulnerable moments that I've ever seen a man who's just. He's vulnerable always because he's so loving, but this yeah, is so like, loving. Yeah. This is like a help me moment. He said, I think I'm dying. Now. <laughs> now my guys, my guys are still upstairs asleep, right? We're heading yeah. to the rink. So I get him in the car, I take him to the rink. He ends up not practicing or or morning skate or whatever it was. He sits in the sauna. I get off the ice and my cell phone's fucking blowing up. It's like I got messages from the guys like call, call, call. So I call and my buddy Willie says to me, man, I just went down to the to the fridge and somebody ate the brownies. No. So, so I you didn't know they were, you didn't know they were <laughs> I had no idea at this point. <laughs> Holy <laughs> is so stoned still. He didn't know what happened. I know these brownies. I could not imagine eating them for the first time in 17 years, but not knowing what I was eating. And you know, he probably he had two or three of these. He probably things. had 400 milligrams. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had talk. to tell him. I, I had to tell enough. him on the drive home. I can't talk. I can't. I. I can't even talk right now because I can. I know exactly what Holly looks look like in this situation. I That's had to tell best. him. I had to tell him. I had to tell him on the drive home. What did somebody say? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even speak. I know that's the best. Oh man. I think he looked at me when we pulled in the driveway and just was like, fuck you. No, you have to leave. You have yeah. to leave. <laughs> like right now, I'm I don't want to see you ever again. You can't stay in my house anymore. Oh my god. He's he's Holly's got the funniest line. My buddy Tony Sansone. Oh. We're when we were drinking with him the other night in St. Louis, we dropped him off at the Ritz, and we're like, "See you tomorrow." He goes, "Hope not." Like he's triple the volley. Hope not. So I we win. We win the that they win the cup in two thousand and two. I'm there. All right, whatever. Uh, the summertime, it's July 4th weekend, so Holly's in Dallas, and I'm in Toronto, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to go to Detroit for the weekend, right? I just won the Stanley Cup. I'm going to go, I'm going to go juice, I'm going to go juice it in Detroit for the weekend, July 4th, Gross Point Yacht Club, the whole thing. Gross Point, yeah. Long story short, I end up having a bunch of people back to the house, right, on the Saturday night, I think. And we go through all the booze. <laughs> this is Holly's house again. <laughs> it's the summer. So, I don't know, man. I'm looking at this fucking bottle of champagne that's signed by the entire 2002 Detroit oh, no. Red Wing Stanley Cup winning team. Oh, and no. it's, a, it's an old bottle. It's like an 88 Dom or something. Something like... Oh really nice, God. but it's a magnum, and I cracked that fucking thing. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh my God! And I kept it, and I kept, and I kept the party going, and I filled that fucking thing back up with water, and I slammed that cork in it. 
<laughs> and like four years later, I got a text message. Fuck you. <laughs> he popped he got, drunk, he got drunk one night and ran out of booze and opened the bottle and realized it didn't pop and it was filled with water and he knew it was me. <laughs> See, we don't get st- we don't get stories like that anymore in the National Hockey League because no. that's no. like that no. is old school. That's old school times right there, man. That is so amazing. I, I don't know if I don't know if the three of us would survive now. I remember A's the last I, couple. I could I couldn't survive with A's right now. There's not yeah. a chance. Last couple, last two years, I was on the ice. I'd be looking up the clock and I'd see five minutes. I'm like, fuck! I can't wait to have a Bud Light. Can't wait to have a Bud Light. And the game went in, and I'd go in and I'd get a Bud Light, and and I look over, and these guys are making protein shakes and. <laughs> And before we get the, before we get the rental to head back to the Marriott, I've already got six into me before, and I'm like, and they're eating, drinking their. Pro, it's just a, it's a different world, and, different world. And I get it. I want to ask you about. Let's talk about uh, the league a little bit. What do you, Jr. and I have our opinion on different teams. What do you think? Because you grew up in North York. I don't, did you grow up a Toronto fan? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I grew up in New Brunswick. I was a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, and and uh, if I ever say anything bad about the Leafs, like I I, I got a picture that I just sent out on Twitter. It's me in my Toronto Maple Leaf pajamas. Which he but, did. He says the Leafs aren't going to make the playoffs this year. He said it. You said but, it. Well, a couple weeks ago, but we don't think this team is built to go past the first round. What are your thoughts on the Toronto Maple Leafs? Man, I get like sad. Like I get it, like a little sad. You know, because mm-hmm. like. I love Shanny. Um, I want to see Shanny win a Stanley Cup. I want to see him win many Stanley Cups. Oh, man, like, I don't think Sheldon Keefe is ever going to outcoach John Cooper or Patrick Waugh. Good point. Um, you know, I, I don't think he can outcoach Paul Maurice. Okay. Who's their goalie, right? How do you win without a goalie, a marquee goalie? even a, a, a Demko or one of these guys that might not be a superstar, but he's fucking good. He's got yep. a great team in front of him. Yep. Who's their back end? You know, you can't win with four guys. No, you, you can't. can't win with five guys. You just can't do it. And you get lured and it's such a, it's such a intoxication. Like, yeah, I don't know. You know, like, I, I don't know what, where's, where's your depth? Where are your Sam Bennett's and your Reinhardt's and your guys yeah. that exactly. so I don't think they can win. Hey, do you, do you, does uh, does Austin Matthews deserve maybe a little bit of attention for the MVP because of the season he's having, even though the team's not playing so well? I mean, I, I guess you can give a guy the MVP, but, like, shouldn't it be to somebody yeah. that if their team wins kind of thing? I agree. Well, it's. I think the playoffs are the, the obviously the playoffs are the key, right? So the playoffs are kind of like the if if you're not in the playoffs, they're not gonna you're not gonna win a uh, a an award. That's that's sort of the thing. But what Austin Matthews is doing, he's got 40 goals in the first 47 games of the year, right? You you gotta that that's unprecedented in this day and age right now. Like this kid can score seventy five goals. It's got to be, or it's got to be some. But again, also Kucherov, what Kucherov is doing, Kuch eighty five points right now. I mean, who's your who's your MVP right now in the National Hockey League? Well, people talk about McKinnon, right? I read the stat; he's got the most points out of any NHL player over the last two seasons, Thir- maybe. Yeah, thir- thirteen months. Yes, thirteen, 13 months. months. Okay, fair enough. Um, Cooch has been doing it for like five years in a row now. Right. Right. He wins Stanley Cups. Um, Austin Matthews, like, I guess, yeah, you want to, you want, you want the, the, the trophy for the most valuable player during the regular season? Like, you can have it. I don't know. Do we really fucking care who gets that trophy? No. No. It's a great point. It's a great point. It's a great Sean, point. This is my assessment of, of, Matthews, 
I roughed Kucherov. When he gets run, he doesn't like it. And he comes back and he fucking whacks yeah. somebody and he gives it to him. McKinnon yeah. does the same thing. When Austin Matthews gets rocked, he puts a smirk on his face and lets everybody else come in. My assessment of him, and I get beat up all the time, is I don't think he has a jam to lead this team to the promised land. He 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 may be a part of it, but I don't think he's going to be the guy that makes them win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I mean, honestly, listen, I, I said this. Maybe I'm crazy. I would have traded Marner and Matthews for Bedard. Wow. Wow. I would have traded them both for the number one pick because, oh, man, where does, where does, how do they have any movement now? Like no, they, with all that money. And by the way, I played with uh, William Nylander's dad and his dad was a dog, man. I, I loved his dad. He yeah. played fucking hard. Yeah. You remember him. What a wild I player. I do. Like, yeah. He, he, skated right, he, had a, he had a stride. He had a stride this far. Like, that was it. Did you play yeah. with? I played with him in New York. In New York, okay. With Yager, those were like the Yager. He yeah. was with Yogs for like two or three yeah, good yeah. years. He, I remember Willie was out on the ice. Like he was at, at the practice ring every day. The kid be out on the ice. So. Do I think William Nylander can turn into uh, a Steve Eiserman? No, but do I think Willie has more of a dog in him maybe than those other two guys? And yes. I, I do. I, yes. I do. So, I, fuck, I like Mitch. He's a nice kid, you know, but you make that much money and you don't, like, does why Mitch are we scare does, does, for him? Who, does Mitch scare anybody? No. 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 Scare anybody. Scare well, anybody. I don't we think talk. McKinnon, I don't think McKinnon or Kucherov before a playoff game is having nightmares about Mitch. Exactly. Exactly. It's a great point, man. It's a it's a great point. A and I'm point. With, I'm with you on Keith too. I think they need a Joel Quenville. They need somebody like that. Uh, and it's about time the NHL let Joel Quenville out of jail for what happened. Um, but I, I'm not. A big speaking fan. about coaches, speaking about coaches, how cool is it that Rick Talkin has turned Vancouver around? That, that Vancouver playing as good as they're playing. Like it, it just goes to show you what you were talking about having your Keenan, like. Rick Tockett is Vancouver's Mike Keenan. It's, yeah, it's awesome. By, yeah, because by the way, JT Miller was floating into oblivion. Like, an un, somebody's, him and Talk obviously are on the same page because that yes. kid is fucking sick. Yes. What a player. A player, yeah. Yeah. What a, and Patterson, I mean, he, he reminds me of Ziggy Palfy, JR. Oh, one of the most, one of the most dynamite players to watch ever because you don't know what he's going to do and next thing you know he's like Phew, here he is yeah and he wow. was like the original ziggy could release the puck from anywhere and it was so heavy it was like a bomb and then so we had and we had uh we had martin brodeur on the show uh, a couple your, weeks ago your buddy, and marty, and your marty brodeur said the guy that was the toughest to save a puck against was ziggy palfy I mean, no one would ever think that, right? And that's no. the best the best goalie of all time, arguably. Yeah, Ziggy was oh man. Remember? <laughs> so he dirty. just quit. He got hit too hard in the game, I think. Uh I wasn't in LA at this point. I was in New York. He got hit in a game and just said, fuck it. <laughs> he had two years left on his deal. That was Ziggy Coffee just said, fuck it. He went home. <laughs> You're <laughs> It's, it's JR brought it up, and you're probably tired of telling it. But listen, you got to tell the story because I, I don't we, Barnaby, Verdur, whoever. Nobody's got a rule named after them. You're the only guy that I know that I refed and, and before and after that's got a rule named after them. The Sean Avery rule. How did that even transpire? Like, where did that even come into your mindset that I'm going to stand in front of Marty Verdur? in New York in a playoff game and wave my hands and, and totally try to disrupt him and fuck with his head. Like, I don't even know where you came up with that, buddy. Yeah, what a lunatic move. I just didn't. <laughs> he, he, was, he was so smart. Like, you're jousting with one of the kings. 
You know what right. I mean? Like, you're not going to get a break against this guy. You think I'm going to trick him? Every time I go in front of his net, his fucking stick is in the back of my thigh. It's in the back of my ankle. It's tapping the back of my knee. He, he, you know, he's like a, 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 a magician. He can see when your weight's on one. I didn't want to fall into him because I was playing a lot and I was about to go on the ice. It was a five on three. Yep. Drury, Shanahan, uh, Yager, Gomez, me, right? You, you scored in that game, right? I scored on that shift right yeah. after. Shift, yeah. But I didn't know what to do. And I was like, don't take a fucking penalty, Sean. I remember saying to myself, you motherfucker. You remember when DiCaprio flips out and once upon a yeah. time in Hollywood, he's yelling yeah. at himself? Yeah. That's what's going through my head. You motherfucker, do not take a penalty right now. Boy, I will be disappointed in you, Sean, if you do. <laughs> so I just went out there and I was like, if I can see him, I can't bump him. I, I, you know, but I got to screen him. Otherwise, I'm useless because I got Shani and fucking Yager fighting over one timers behind me. <laughs> just put your hand in his face. The craziest part of the whole thing, and, and uh, Peeler, you'll know because, like, I don't know. I guess I didn't get a penalty. No. We won the game. I went home. I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and they had changed the rule. Yeah. Well, Don Van, Don Van Massenhoven. And, That's you know, right. Donnie was a great guy. Donnie's like 6'6. Six, six. He, yeah. he was a former OPP in Ontario. You, you, you would have got along with him. And I know JR, you would have. And he was the ref in that game, and he didn't know whether to shit or wind his watch because he didn't know what to do because there, there was no rule for it. And and it was so actually brilliant. It was actually a brilliant move. And Abe scores, and they change the rule the next day. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> they usually have to have board of governors meetings to change rules. They just they just changed it. <laughs> they do have to have board of governors right. meetings. Right. They put it on a schedule, and the PA is a part right. of it, and it's a fucking process. <laughs> They changed it in like 12 hours because I think they probably thought to themselves, if we don't do something, he's going to do this the rest of the series. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. And it's, if you watch the clip, Drury comes over and he says into my ear, um, I thought he said Coho, but whatever we called Matt, what, what was the big guy's name? Well, there was Van Mass, and I don't know who his partner was in that game off the top of my head. Yeah, I, he cool. says to me, maybe Mark know, Foss, maybe Mark Foss said uh, leaky. I don't know. He says no. He points to Van Mass and Hoven in the corner, and he says he's going to give you a penalty. And I, I'm like, I and I'm, I go for what? What's he? Me and me and fucking Drury are having a conversation while this is going on, and I'm like, <laughs> you see, Drew comes over and he whispers in my ear. He's yeah. going to give you a penalty. And I go, for what? And Drew looked at me and he's like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, this, there's, uh... well, talk about the Rangers. I can talk about them for a second. Like, Well, you know what? I, it's funny. I, I was going to ask you about the Rangers, Edmonton, and T.O. So, yes, go next to the Rangers. Yeah, New York. I mean, I would love to fucking – I would love to, to, to be like – so in on the Rangers and be a part of, I would love for them to win. I love their fans. I love that city. I don't, awesome. I, I want them to win. There's something missing with that team as well. Mm. It's not as bad as Toronto because they obviously have a great goalie. Uh, I don't think they have any depth in their bottom six. Yeah. Better, better, much better back end than Toronto. Well, with Cheeto, with Cheeto going down, that's a big loss for Cheeto, for them to Cheeto going down. That, that hurts them a lot, but I, I totally agree with you. Their top, their top five are really good. Yeah, I think after that it drops off significantly, and I think yep. their their top three defensemen are good, and their goaltender is spectacular. And then there's but, rumors today that they want to trade. They're they're taking offers on Kako. Yeah, well, well I would too. I would yeah. too. I trade Kako for a bag of pucks. To tell you the truth, <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah. Um, well, I was just going to ask you a question because. Um, Edmonton. Yeah, Edmonton. Go to Edmonton first, uh, Aves. Well, so, holy fuck, man. 16 in a row. In a row. You know, what a bad bounce to have 10, 12 days off until you're 17. <laughs> and Is it, though? Is it, though? Is it, though? And it's Vegas. 
Their next yeah, game. So, I, by the way, you did a you did a really cool video about <laughs> uh, about Corey Perry, you know, digging a tunnel from from you know Toronto all the way to Edmonton. I think it's pretty cool that Edmonton signed him and gave him a shot there, and I think it's he's going to help them tremendously. Yeah, I listen. I love, I love, like, I said it. I mean, I don't know. Fucking second chances, third chances. I mean, do you want to win, right? Like, yeah. the mystery behind what happened in Chicago. Who the fuck knows how that yeah. was handled? Uh, he's now in Edmonton. Yeah. 16 in a row is an incredible feat. Like, yeah. But, again... I just don't know how you can keep that train rolling with five or six guys leading the charge. Because in the playoffs, I think that, you know, that depth of having a third and fourth line is going to beat you. You know, um, uh, Connor is, the kid's unbelievable. The power play, like teams will stop taking penalties too. It's going to yep. tighten up here, right? Yep, yep. Yep. I don't think that uh, I don't think that Edmonton I don't think Edmonton can win. Well, you look at Vegas last year, Ace, they had four good lines. Their fourth line, uh, I forget the kid's name off the top of my head. He's the one that knocked out uh, Matthew Kachuk with the broken sternum. Vegas yep. had four lines. Yep. Their smallest defenseman was 6'2 and Alec Martinez. They had good goaltending. I, I'm with you. Edmonton's a tremendous team, but as you're you're bang on, like you got to have four lines in the playoffs, guys. Yeah, we saw your team, Tampa. You know, John Cooper's a good buddy of mine. John Cooper used to coach in the North American Hockey League when Chaser and Hully owned the team here in St. Louis. That's when I got to know Coop. The best, the and best you, guys ever. And you think about the four, third and fourth lines that Tampa had during that run. That's why they won. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't Steven Stamkos. It was you know what I mean? He was obviously a huge part of it, but you gotta have a good third and fourth line to, to win four rounds of the playoffs. <clears throat> yeah. And I also think that that coaches so here's I've been saying this for a couple of years and I don't understand it. And maybe talks figured it out. I don't know. I haven't watched Vancouver close enough. If your top six want to play a certain way, I'm fine with that. But your bottom six they have very strict directives. You get to the red line and you fucking chip the puck in yeah. and you try and kill the other team's defense. Because what right. you're then going to do is you're going to wear down. Wear them down. So that your top six can just go out there. And so I don't know why coaches haven't instilled. And like maybe Detroit was like that back in the day where the grind line just knew we're not going to fucking play that game. We'll let Iggy and Sergey and these guys, we get the red line, we chip it in, and it's an accumulation. How many licks can I get on fucking Kale McCarr? Yeah. So that by game four, he's limping. Yeah. You know what I mean? And or or I, he's looking over or he's looking over his shoulder. Right. That's 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 just as much, right? Because the second guessing, but um I, I'll right, say so, about uh, Vancouver quickly. Quinn, Quinn Hughes, I think. Holy fuck, this kid is good, man. He's, he's a good. Stud. He's, he's a good. Stud. Can you believe there's three of them? It's unbelievable. I mean, it really is remarkable. But I think like Quinn, he he looks to me like he's like Scott Niedermeyer and Lidstrom, like kind yeah. of combined. yeah, all in one, right? Yeah, I agree. It's scary. It's really scary. Okay, so we're 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 thirty two games thirty two games in, or to the end of the season. And this was a cool question that was asked of me this morning. You're going to go out on a limb. You're going to say something very crazy about what's going to happen in the, in the game in the next thirty games. Okay, you're going to make a prediction. What's going to happen? If if you see something in the game. Give give the Sean Avery prediction that is the craziest but could happen until the end of the season. T this morning I said the Arizona Coyotes are going to make the playoffs, which is a very crazy prediction, but it could well, happen. Not going to so, happen, but thanks, Tim. Okay. I didn't ask you. 
Uh, okay, okay, okay. So I'll tell you, the New York Islanders scare me, all right? And I think they, they should scare everyone because Samsonov's the arguably could be the best goalie in the league, statistically. Yeah. Maybe in the world. Maybe in the world. Patrick Waugh invented the butterfly. If you don't think those two are going to start getting into a rhythm, then you're crazy. And who knows what that rhythm can turn into. Like, I mean, you've got the best. I think Patrick is the best of all time, in my opinion. Yep. Um, competitor. Like, so that happens. Then what does he do to his team, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew Barzell is an elite fucking player. Yeah, I think he's just as good as all these elite guys, and we got to find his next year. Yeah, right? but I yeah. also think he's maybe a little bit of a Patrice Bergeron, like he could turn into a little bit more of a two-way guy. Who knows? They scare me. The New York Islanders, because like thirty games, give Patrick another twenty to get that engine. All they need to do is be in the playoffs, and the final ten games, he gets them playing. And they make an acquisition at the deadline. Who knows who they go and get? I don't Great. know who they get. And buddy, they have Big D. They have Big. What? A, what a, hey, Pel by the way, yeah, Pelic, what a, Thompson, Mayfield. They've got Big D. That's that. That. What a great alley you just went you. I agree with you hundred percent because when Patrick Waugh goes into that dressing room, those players they they sit up straight. They're like, okay, this isn't. And no disrespect to Lane Lambert. Lane's a no. good guy. But it's Patrick Waugh, like you said, one of the greatest, if not, between probably him and Marty. Yeah. And, yeah. and when they go in, when he goes in the draft, I'm with you. I think that team could, and you know, Lou's that's a great, that's a great call on. Listen, that's a, listen, Lou's going to find he's going to round out his his fourth or his third line with somebody. Like he knows if there's any GM in the league at this point, I think Lou can probably identify those those bottom six better than anyone maybe yeah and and maybe he's already got some in the farm team or he'll, he's gonna make a deal be careful man those that fucking team is gonna be good they're they're yeah. gonna be good i totally agree I totally that agree. fourth line that fourth line with martin Sezikis, and like Clutter, Clutter, and, Clutterbuck, and you can Clutterbuck. get another you can get another run out of them one more yeah, you can. yes you can 100 yes, percent Best, so, the best, the best, the best fourth line in, in hockey for the last five years. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, no question. No yeah. question. Well, listen, Aves, I, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on with us, man. Um, I don't have, I don't have to tell you how much I love you, I, even though we don't talk as much. But we're going to change that. Uh, I love you more than anything. I've, uh, I respected you for many, many things. But we were teammates, and we stuck, we stuck next to each other through the highs and lows, man. And yeah. I'll always, I'll always be on, on the Sean Avery train. Always. And, I, uh, uh, I love, I love you coming on with us. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. I really, I really enjoy what you two are doing together. You know what I mean? Because it's tough to find like, fuck, who can you sit across from and, and, and argue with and debate? <laughs> we do it. That's it. And agree with, and like, it's like when we play, whatever, you know, when we're done, whatever, we're on to the next one. We have a beer. We, 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 we yeah. hug it out. We laugh it out. So I, I think you guys are doing a great job. I, I really, we, we need more of this. I, you know agree. I, mean? we do. I agree. Do. I just want to say this before we sign off and, uh, um, we're, we're all different as we get older, as we have kids and, uh, we all do. We've all done things when we were younger and, and I love, I know the person you are and you know, people, they have their perceptions of me. They have their perceptions of JR, but really, you know, they don't know shit about any of us at the end no. of the day. And, no. and so I, 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 I really appreciate you coming on buddy. You're a good man. And uh, we've all said stuff and done stuff in the past that, yeah, and I mean, we will, and we will continue to. We'll probably continue, but I, I, I really, I think the world of you, and I really appreciate you coming on, buddy. I, I, uh, I appreciate it, guys. Keep going. Hey, Let's go. You know. Hey, uh, good luck. Good luck with the acting thing, and keep hey, being, a, keep being a great dad. Thank you. Obviously, 
<laughs> what, what you're doing what you're doing as a dad is amazing you got, it really is you got, you got just butchered online today for calling it a, a do, uh uh what did you call it instead of a dog leg you called it a uh oh. yeah 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 what everyone it called it's called a dog leg but you called it a a, a dog lake no, you didn't call. It, no, you called it a dog lake. Yeah, dog it's lake. Dog leg. L e g. L e g. What is a dog leg? I don't it's get a dog it. Dog leg. It's a dog leg right. Dog leg left. I mean, uh, it goes up to the right. You called it a dog lake. Dog and lake. Everyone was like laughing their heads off. It was like your son's going to be beating the shit out of you in the golf course, and that's, <laughs> I love it. I love 401 it. 401k. <laughs> all right boys hey listen that's another edition of uh snipes and stripes with my one of my favorite people in the world sean avery and one of my other favorite people tim you're the best uh no filter.net no place to get the best content and aves thanks for bringing the content with you tonight buddy i love you, see you boys i love you see you boys guys everybody have a great night